This video is going to review the insertion of a nasal pharyngeal airway in an adult patient. So generally we don't do these on infants. Uh, we have different sizes, but we're usually using these on adults, at least at the uh, civilian basic life support level. So these devices are meant to go in through the nose and provide an open airway by getting past the back of the tongue. Now these still require some sort of airway maneuver usually, such as a jaw thrust, a head tilt, or positioning the patient in the recovery position for them to fully function. But these do assist in improving the airway of a patient who has some sort of cognitive depression. So they're unconscious um, or they're quite centrally depressed. Um, this is going to assist in getting some air into that patient, like I said, in combination with a manual airway maneuver or patient positioning. So they come in multiple sizes and you need to size them to the patient. To size a nasal pharyngeal airway, you're gonna line it up between the nose and the earlobe. So we can take our airway here, nose to earlobe, and we can see that's a bit long. So we're gonna try the next size here. And that one's pretty good. That one might be a bit short. So we're gonna go with this one here. Um, now these tubes are dry when they come packaged and your nose is generally dry as well. So inserting this dry is not going to work. You need to use a lubricating jelly with this. So these lubricating jellies, they're sp specifically um, for nasal airways um, or medical purposes. So make sure you're using a lubricated jelly. What you're going to do is apply this to the outside of the nasal airway, avoiding getting it actually in the, the hole of the airway. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure the point is always away from the middle of the nose. So if we're inserting on the right side, we're going to insert it this way. If we were inserting on the opposite side, we would actually turn our nasal airway to the other direction so that the point is always away from the middle. That's where all the blood vessels are. So we're trying to avoid irritating that. We're always going to start with the right nostril first. If we meet resistance, then we'll try the left. Big thing with this. You're just going to insert it into the nostril, okay, and gently twist as you go, and it should go in nice and easily, especially if it's lubricated. The advantage of this airway is a patient doesn't need to be completely unresponsive, so they can be semi-conscious and accept this airway and provide some assistance. And like I said, this, in combination with patient positioning, you know, such as the recovery position or a jaw thrust or head tilt, can really improve the airway and the oxygenation of the patient. If the patient is gagging or having difficulty with this, you can withdraw it a bit. If it's still causing difficulty, you can fully just remove the airway by pulling it out. If we had to do the left nostril because we were getting some resistance on the right, again, you start upside down to so the point away. Again, you're going to just feed it in, and you will see that the airway will just kind of naturally turn itself as you go down. So you don't need a lot of force with this. You're just gently placing it, and then again, if you have to remove it, you can just pull it straight out. So that was the insertion of the nasal pharyngeal airway on an adult patient.